All right, this one is for the ladies today. We are gonna go through the top five mistakes that women are making in the gym. These are mistakes that I see a lot of women making when I go to the gym. These are mistakes that a lot of women are making, uh, women who come to me looking for training programs or they wanna train with me, or friends, relatives, uh, looking for training advice. And I see that these are very, very common mistakes that are holding you back from getting the results that you wanna get in the gym. So I'm gonna break down each of these mistakes, why it is such a big mistake, and then I'm gonna tell you guys what to do about it so that you can avoid making these mistakes and you can get better results from your training. So mistake number one, too much cardio. Way too many girls are doing way too much cardio. <clears throat> a lot of people still think that the best way to lose, to burn fat and to lose weight is to just do endless amounts of running or spend hours on the elliptical every day. And that's not the most efficient way to train. So <clears throat> if you're looking for body composition change, if you're trying to slim down, get a, a lean toned like athletic physique that a lot of women are looking for, Run, endless running or endless cardio is not going to do it for you. What happens is a lot of these women, and you see girls like this who go to the gym all the time, and they just run on the treadmill five days a week, and they end up skinny fat. They burn their muscle and they burn fat, and they end up skinny fat. They're, they're smaller than they were before, but their overall body composition, they don't have that look that they're going for. And then they just keep chasing it by doing this endless cardio. So <clears throat> this isn't the best way to optimize your health or to optimize your body composition. It's pretty, pretty uh, well covered in the literature that resistance training is necessary for pretty much every single type of population demographic. So you ladies need to be resistance training if you wanna optimize your health and if you wanna optimize your body composition. So twice a week should be the minimum that you're doing resistance training. Then you can add your cardio on top of that, but you should also mix up that cardio. You should be doing some high intensity conditioning uh, for shorter durations, and then you can do your longer cardio on other days. So you need to start to splice this stuff up if you really wanna optimize your health, and more importantly, if you wanna get the best results in body composition, which is the results a lot of these women are looking for. They're looking for that sleek, toned, athletic body, and you're not gonna get that by just endlessly running on the hamster wheel. Okay, number two, when they are resistance training, a lot of women are using too light of weight. Everybody's scared to get big bulky muscles. So they grab five pound dumbbells and they use those to do their 10, 10 reps of bench press. And they do that same thing over and over every single week. <clears throat> the problem with that, <clears throat> well, number one, let's go back to that, uh, the, the myth of if I train with heavy weights that I'm gonna get big bulky muscles. It's really hard for women to put on big bulky muscles. It's hard for men to put on muscle. It takes a lot of really, really focused work, a lot of excess calories to put on muscle mass. So, and men have a lot more testosterone than women. So for women, it's really, really hard to put on muscle mass. When I have females who are training to put on muscle, professional athletes, and we are eating to put on muscle, we're lifting to put on muscle, it takes us a long time to even put on a half a pound of muscle mass. It's really, really hard. So training with weights will actually help you get that toned look that a lot of women are looking for. <clears throat> and that doesn't come from just doing high reps of everything with really light weight. So you need to tax the muscles, you need to tax your body if you wanna get that adaptation. So if you're doing 10 reps, you need to pick a weight that's gonna challenge you for those 10 reps. So I like to say, leave one or two reps in the tank. So what that means is if I grab uh, a weight and I do my 10 reps, I should only be able to get one or two more reps with that weight. If I could do 13, 14, 15 reps and I'm only doing sets of 10, then that weight's too light for me and I'm not gonna get an adaptation. Also, if you're just looking to burn fat, burn calories, a lot of women will do these circuit training things where they just have light weights for everything. But again, you're not taxing your body, so you're not burning as many calories. So when you actually tax those muscles, that burns a ton of calories, not only in the gym, but also in the next couple days after the gym as your muscles are recovering from that workout. So you'll stay at a higher calorie uh, burning, uh, you'll stay at a higher caloric burning rate for a couple days afterwards. So we've gotta use some heavier weights, some moderate weights, challenge yourself. Whatever your rep range is, pick a weight that's gonna challenge you for that rep range. You shouldn't be able to get more than one or two reps outside of that rep range. If you don't know, you're unsure, one of the tests I have my athletes do all the time, when they get to rep number 10, I say, give me one more, give me one more, give me one more. And I keep going until they can't get one more. If they got 17 reps, that weight was way too light and we need to bump up on the next set because we've just wasted that set. 
So, can't be working out with such light weights all the time. It's not gonna give you the physique that you're looking for. It's not gonna give you the results that you're looking for. Number three, chasing the burn. So we see this all the time now with uh, uh, Instagram, social media, um, everybody's chasing the booty burn. And that's good in certain instances. But just because a muscle is burning doesn't necessarily mean that it's growing. That burning sensation that you get is the buildup of metabolic waste products, which is really good for hypertrophy. But it's not supposed to be used in every set all the time. And it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best exercise for uh, developing those muscle groups. So just because something doesn't burn or isn't sore the next day doesn't mean that you're not getting a good workout. So we need to change the focus of creating a mind-muscle connection, feeling the muscles doing the work, and then sometimes you won't get a burn when you're working with heavier weights, but you can still stimulate growth. So if I'm trying to build a bigger booty, I can work with some heavier weights and maybe I'm doing a, a barbell hip thruster and I'm only doing eight to 10 reps, which is a great range for building hypertrophy. So I have a heavy enough weight that I couldn't get more than 10 reps with it. I might not get a big burn in my glutes, maybe a little bit, but nothing like you'd get doing 100 steps of a mini band walk. That doesn't mean that the mini band walk is building your glutes better than the, uh, the hip thruster. So chasing the burn, it's not the end all solution to building muscle, to burning fat. If I feel a burn in my bicep, that doesn't mean I'm burning off fat here. That's not the way the body works. <clears throat> Number four, too much or too little variety. So a lot of women fall on one end of the spectrum here, and the answer is right in the middle. Either too much variety in their training program, meaning they just go in and do stuff. So a lot of women follow these progr programs that they get from Instagram influencers who are not coaches or trainers. They're just people who happen to be fit, and they're selling you some, some, a bunch of exercises on a piece of paper. So that's not a training program. Anybody could write up 10 exercises on the board here and then put a number next to it and say, go do that as a workout and then do that for four days and call that a training program. A training program mean that it means that it's put together to accomplish a certain goal and it's uh, sequential. So as you build one thing on top of the next, you continue to get closer to your training goal. If I just put 30 uh, band walks and then 50 crunches and 50 squat jumps, that's not a training program. That's just a randomized workout. And we've seen in research, we've seen in practice, I've been doing this for 11 years, randomized training does not get the same results that a, a well-structured periodized plan will get you. So too much variety is not a good thing. Too little variety is also not a good thing. So some people follow this where they find maybe a training program they like and they just do that consistently over time. And they'll go to do the same program for six months, 12 months. Now, we have to, apply a different stimulus if we want the body to adapt and get better. So if I just get off the couch, I haven't done anything, any training program I do, I'm gonna get results from because I haven't done anything. Anything is a new stimulus. But if I do that program for six months, now it's gonna take something different to get my body to stress my body. My body's already built up a resilience to whatever I was doing. Now I need to stress the system in a different way. So I need to add more weight different exercises, more reps. I need to change things up so it provides some variety and that's going to change the adaptation. It's gonna change the stimulus on my body and that's gonna force my body to continue to get better over time. So you've gotta fall right in the middle of this spectrum. You can't just go in and follow randomized training and just do stuff when you go to the gym and get sweaty. That's not gonna get you the results you want. But you also can't have too little variety where we're just doing the same thing over and over again. So we need to get repeated. So the best way to do this Follow a training program that has the same exercises for maybe four to six, even eight weeks if you're a beginner, and slightly get a different variety each week by changing the uh, adding heavier load or maybe doing one or two more reps. So you're challenging the body in a slightly different way, but you're still doing the same movement pattern. So you get time to build up some competency in that exercise, but you're getting a little bit different stimulus. You don't need a ton of variety. You just need a little bit to continue to change that stimulus. Okay, and then the last one here, no structure or plan. So this kind of goes hand in hand with number four. A lot of people go to the gym and they don't really know what they're doing, or maybe they just have something for that day. So this happens a lot of times with trainers too. People find a trainer, and if your trainer doesn't have this well-structured plan for you, if he, can't sit, he or she can't sit you down and say, here's where you are today, and here's where you're gonna be in three months, then that's not a trainer. You just have a workout buddy who's giving you workouts. You need a plan, you need somebody who says, what's your goal? 
Okay, six months from now, you want to lose six inches off your waist, you want to build your glutes a little bit bigger, you want to tone out your stomach, and you want to lose, to, in order to tone out your stomach, we're gonna to need to lose 8% uh, or 10% body fat. So we've got a couple goals for you. Now, if I wanna do that in six months, I need to know where I need you to be in five months, and then four months, and then three months, and then two months, and then one month, so I know where we should start today if we wanna get there. So it's called back engineering a training program. You start with the end goal in mind, and you create a structured sequential plan that's gonna help you accomplish that goal. That's the way to hit your goals and to consistently hit your goals and get real results. Otherwise, you're just guessing. What I like to tell people, not or going to the gym and not having a plan or a structured training program is like trying to drive across country and not having a map. You might end up getting to your destination or somewhere close to it, but it's going to be a lot faster, a lot more efficient to have a guide, a road map that tells you exactly where you need to go so you can avoid any major, um, <clears throat> any major issues along the way and you don't waste time driving this way when you should have just been going straight. So you need to follow a good structured training program, and that's gonna help you to mitigate a lot of these other problems if that program is put together well by a professional. Okay, so those are the five mistakes that women are making when they go to the gym. <coughs> and then the last bonus mistake I'm gonna give you is too many people focusing on one thing. So a lot of women today are going in and they just wanna tone their abs, or they just wanna tone their arms, or they just wanna build a bigger booty. So all they do is that stuff all the time. That's not going to optimize your health and it's not the best way to get your results. You should put an emphasis on some of those things that you wanna do, but you need a well-balanced training program, a well-structured training program that's gonna help you to create balance throughout your body so that you're not creating long-term problems. So if I just train one muscle all the time, the muscles that balance that one out are gonna develop like this. Eventually, that's gonna cause injuries, that's gonna cause a whole host of problems that you'll be facing down the road. So, you can emphasize those areas that you're really looking to, to focus on or, or you, whatever your weak areas are. You can hit those with a little more volume, you can hit them with a little more frequency, but you need to follow a well-structured training program that's also gonna accomplish all of your other health and physical goals, not just focus on one muscle group or on one body part all the time, because that's not gonna be the way to optimize your health, that's not gonna be the, op the way to optimize your fitness and to live the best life that you can possibly live. All right, so those are my five mistakes plus that one bonus mistake. Now, if you're looking at this and you're saying, okay, this stuff's all great, I'm making all these mistakes, I don't know what the hell to do, Coach Christina and I have put together a training program to help you guys. The whole point of this training program is Coach Christina wanted to help people to not make these mistakes. She wants to help women to mitigate these mistakes so you can get results in the gym. So she's put together a three month training program that we have available online for you guys. But today I'm gonna to give you guys, if you click the link below in this video, I'm gonna give you guys a free workout from that training program. So you can print that workout out, you can take it to the gym, you'll have a structured plan to follow, it's well balanced, it's focused on developing uh, well-rounded strength and body composition to help you accomplish those training goals. And it'll help you see what a real training program looks like. And if you like that, then we've got plenty more for you guys. But download that, bring it to the gym, give it to some of your friends, let them take it, uh, let them try it out at the gym so that you guys can not make these major mistakes and that you guys can optimize your training and you can get better results from the training that you're doing and all the hard work that you're doing in the gym. Thanks for checking this video out. If you like this one or you know other women who are making these mistakes, share this one out with your friends so that we can help all of these women get better results in the gym.